Hello and welcome back to the Now We Know Show, the show where we discuss a topic of interest and by the end we will have learnt something new and hopefully you will too. I'm Zach. I'm Buzz. And I'm Jack. And welcome to the Now We Know Show. Now this week's episode is all about... The moon landings. Ooh. Or supposed moon landings. Supposed moon landings. So I suppose that what we would say is not true or false, but real or fake. That's yes. what we're looking at. Mm. We're looking to see if they're real or fake. Yes. So let's uh, start off by going over to the computer and see what the computer has got on moon landings. Computer, tell us about moon landings. According to Wikipedia, a moon landing is the arrival of a spacecraft on the surface of the moon. This includes both crewed and robotic missions. The first human-made object to touch the moon was the Soviet Union's Luna 2 on the 13th of September 1959. The United States Apollo 11 was the first crewed mission to land on the moon on the 20th of July 1969. Right, so that's that's the computer's rather definition, yeah. stark definition of the moon landings. So and if you didn't know about, obviously, the different things that land on the moon, there's actually been a few. Yeah, there's been loads. Um, Supposedly. Yeah, there were. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a difficult one for me because I am really, I know what I... Yeah, believe. I'm not even going to use the word believe. I know what I know. Yeah. I, in life, I have that kind of uh, thing where you can have a belief in something that you can't prove to be there. So you have to believe in it, but you don't have to believe in something you know is true and can be proven with solid facts, you don't have to believe in that. You you know in it, and I'll, right from the beginning, unfortunately, that's my, my yeah. stance here. I know I was trying to defend the flat earthers on the on the flat Earth podcast, but on this one, I can't do anything but just deal with the facts as as they present themselves. Well, it's interesting because when we came up with the idea for this podcast, we said about doing moon landings. It's kind of developed over time into the whole curiosity about whether or not it was fake or not. Hmm. It well, kind yeah. of we we kind of turned in it's into a more of a conspiracy, but when you say we, are you talking about the human race in general? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah not just us no. in the sound studio. It's us, okay, okay listeners. It's all our fault, really. <laughs> we're, no, sorry. It's, we're sorry. We're <laughs> sorry. Um, but no, I mean, we're, yeah, the moon landing in 1969. Uh, when I say moon landing, the first first manned manned mission to to uh, land on the moon. Um, and yes, from that point onwards, that question has. Been yeah, there's, there's like kind of a developed a community said, that's kind of developed. No, they're fake, mm. and so that's what we're discussing. Very, very we're similar. We're going to be looking at the evidence that we've researched, yeah. and to say, okay, what uh, what reasons do people believe that the moon landings are fake, and hopefully answering those those yeah. and saying why why. And we're going to learn decisively whether well, or not they haven't or not. <laughs> I think, I think again, the, the ethos of the Now We Know show is to try and leave it open to anybody that's listening. So if, if, if somebody's listening to this show and they truly believe that the moon landings are fake, that's fine. And we always encourage you to make comments at the end. And, hey, we're open to somebody coming into the studio at a further episode to yeah. discuss, their discuss this, just like the, with the Flat Earth or any of the other podcasts that we yeah. do. Um, so we can try, try, listeners, if you're listening to this, at ultimately the end of the day, it's your decision on mm. what you think. But we're just going to have this as a discussion. Well, it's kind of out of curiosity as well. Yeah, out it? of curiosity. Yeah. yeah. And as I believe the Now We Know show to be, we kind of go into the more kind of weird and wonderful theories and just talk about them and see where we stand at the end. Exactly. <laughs> doesn't I necessarily mean, mean we believe any of these things. It's just exactly. I a, mean, a fun uh, discussion. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, we have those ones where... Yeah, you know, we're we're left at the end of the day still scratching our chins, you know, stroking our beards. We all right, have yeah. beards. We're, we're, we're asking the question, aren't <laughs> yeah. we? That's and it. Uh, and you know, and so having a little discussion about it. Discussion. Yeah. <laughs> so, but let's kick this one off. We we've really got, uh, I suppose, what you have is a a big stack of yeah, you know, with the conspiracy theories, if you want to call it that. Those that, those people. I mean, you could say on one side of it. You could say the conspiracy theorists are the ones that say that it's fake, mm. but they would say, flip the coin over and say, well, the people that say it's not fake and that man did land on the moon is... That's is, the conspiracy. That's the conspiracy, yeah. and all that's fake. So all we can do is look at the evidence yeah, and then see if we can maybe explain mm. the evidence. Yeah, so present, present a case for why they're fake and see if we can present the evidence of why they're not. Yes. And, uh, yeah, that works both ways, I suppose. Yes. So what do you guys come up with? I've got an interesting kind of 
question to pose straight okay. off. Okay, please. What would be the reason for faking the moon landing? If we're, if we're talking about the US government mm -hmm. faking the moon landing, mm -hmm. what's the actual reason behind doing that? Okay, do you have any ideas on that? I kind of guess it come, kind of comes under that same category as the flat earth, where it's like the idea of control. Possibly. The, the, or, some of the conspiracy theorists kind of... You see, I, 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 carry on, Zach. Kind of, they to think that when you believe this lie, they then have you. They, they have control of you. Did, yeah. Did you come somehow? Up with, uh... See, I think it's more of a political thing. I think it was to do with the space race at yeah, the time. That, that, mm. That's that's what I was going to say. I think America race. America desperately wanted to beat Russia to the moon. Okay. Okay. Well, if we look at it from that point for yeah. a moment, uh, the computers already told us that the Russians made the first actual yeah robotic non-manned mission to yeah. the moon. And if we look at the space race, the Russians put the first satellite into orbit. Sputnik mm. 1, and we had uh, the dog that went up there, what's his name? Uh, Lanker or something, Limp? I can't remember the dog's name now offhand. It was a dog. But they, <laughs> they, they were the first one to put an animal in space. Yeah. And first human. And the first human, Yuri Gagarin, a cosmonaut, into space. And it was kind of like a wake-up call for the US. Yeah. And, yeah, and then they did have their own moon landing space program. So obviously they went on to do the first actual moon landing with a robotic yeah, um, device uh, device on the on the moon surface. So when you're talking about the space race, Russia was way out in front. Yeah. Now your problem is, is all this is happening in a period known as the Cold War. Mm. Yes. And tensions were high all the time. Mm. And if you're America, what uh, the political leaders as well as the general public? I mean, how are you going to feel if there is your mortal enemies at the time mm. could put something into orbit? and literally rain bombs down on you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Or indeed it. on the moon. So it's about superiority in space. You know, if you've got mm. superiority in space uh, above any other country, then you know, you've got, you're have got you sitting there and you're a sitting duck. Yeah, that kind of drips into the whole political thing as well, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Saying so I guess the, so, so, yeah, the bragging you, rights. <laughs> exactly. So suddenly you have this, uh, we've, got to, we've got to do something. We've got to do something to prove that the USA can isn't helpless. We isn't do have a degree of security. <laughs> we can beat Russia and win the space race. Yeah. And if we're going to do that, we're going to do it by putting a manned mission on the moon. Yeah, lay down the gauntlet. <laughs> and uh, the president, what did he say? He said, "We're not doing it because it's easy. We're doing it because it's hard." Yeah, John F. Kennedy. That's yeah. it. We're doing it because it's hard. And if they manage to do that, then America worldwide would be seen as to win the space race and the the bolster the. Uh, general public's uh, support for the government and USA, yeah, type yeah. of thing. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> political. And I think at the time, if I'm right, NASA's budget that they were given by um, the US government was huge. Yeah. I mean, compared to today, where it's way low down on the... Yeah, on <laughs> footballers the, get paid more. <laughs> uh, yeah, footballers probably do get paid, <laughs> paid more weekly. But, uh, yeah, that was... We must get to the moon. Yeah. So, that, so your question... Has that answered your question? I think so. Yeah, that kind of poses another question that I've just thought. <laughs> but what I will, I will finish that that one off by saying, in my opinion, hmm. they, they did they did they win the space race? I mean, let's face it. As we just spilled off, Russia first We're satellite, ahead, yeah. first animal, first human, first moon landing. Mm. They they finished yeah. the yeah. race, but I don't know if they. It's kind of like that one-upmanship, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know suppose the in the Western world, we're always taught that the Americans are the kind of heroes of the space race. But well, um, yeah, and that. So I personally didn't know till before this that Russia were so far ahead and how and much yeah. they'd actually done. They they, they were having a, their uh, uh, manned missions to to uh, land on on the moon, but um, they had disastrous accidents and, and consequences, yeah, yeah. and that's why it ended up being shelved. It was very experimental at yeah. the time, wasn't it? Mm. Another question uh, I've just thought of in that discussion. If Russia were so kind of paranoid, I guess, about America reaching the moon first, why haven't the Russians exposed, if this is uh, a see. fake moon landing? <laughs> yeah. We were talking about this, yeah, weren't yeah. we? Why haven't think, the Russians think, tried harder to kind of expose you, that as a hoax? I think what you've just done is, for what I had uh, looked, to have this discussion this evening, that was probably the crowning glory yeah, question at the end hardest to answer question <laughs> and, well not hardest to answer but you brought that one right to the beginning where i was i, I thought we'd probably get to that uh, just forget it no no no, no <laughs> it's like the quiz fine. a couple of weeks ago um, okay 
So you say about why haven't Russia exposed it? Mm. Why hasn't anyone? Well, <laughs> Russia's not the only space agency. You know, you've got China, space China, agency. yeah, Japan. When uh, I, I suppose this is it. If we're talking about uh, true or false, uh, real or fake, when Apollo Eleven mission went to the moon. There were space agencies uh, around the whole globe that were tracking it. They were, yeah. yeah, they were checking. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you're quite right because can you, under the current situation that we're in at the moment in 2022 with the Russia uh, and their so-called special mission into the Ukraine, um, and how literally the whole of the West have, uh, has pushed them out with sanctions, etc. A country like Russia would they would be the first people. To jump on board if they could just say, mm. you know, USA, you never went yeah. to the moon. <laughs> it's all a lie. It's yeah, all it's a lie. Like your what government you, what, are lying to you. What are you going to look like? <laughs> Cause <know>? mass panic. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, it's a, it's a, it's a, 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 an ace up the sleeve. Same, yeah. same with China. Mm. I mean, the thing is, if you faked it, those other governments are just going to say, no, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> we can prove you didn't. We tracked you. There was nothing. Yeah, you yeah. didn't go there. You didn't yeah. land. Um, so you've just probably answered the, the key still, question. But there still is to a degree, a large community that does believe well, that it is fake. Yeah, that's one that goes into a bit of research that I did, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I actually discovered quite a lot about the conspiracy theories surrounding the moon landings. Uh, went down a few rabbit holes <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime. Um, but to make sure this episode isn't hours and hours long, I just whittled it down to a few interesting things that I learned. Mm-hmm. Uh, so various sources claim... Uh, that anywhere between 6 to 20% of Americans don't believe the moon landings actually happened, and a further 5% are undecided, which I thought was quite high. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> okay. you said 6, you to, 6 to 20? Five, uh, yeah, 6 to 20%, depending on what source. That's almost like a quarter of the population. Yeah, but let's hop back briefly to our flat Earth scenario. Mm. A large amount of Americans are also very religious with their beliefs, yeah. and as we said with the flat Earth... A lot of those say that the Earth is flat because it says so in the Bible. And if that's mm. the case, you're not going to the moon. Mm. You know? So, yeah. so uh, it could be that they don't believe it, not just uh, from a perspective of maybe false science or all the other things that we're going to start discussing as we go through this podcast, but it might simply be down to religion. the religious belief yeah. that it's an impossibility. Yeah. Yeah. So is it a case of people who believe the Earth is flat have to necessarily have to believe that we didn't land on the moon. <laughs> well, from what we did on that one, and obviously we don't want to... Uh, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you haven't listened to the Flat Earth one, <laughs> listeners, go and listen to the Flat Earth podcast. But if you remember, I think one of the one of the points in that, the Flat Earth societies, who, again, argue between themselves, but uh, I think it was something like, you can't go further than about 62 miles into the air before you hit an invisible barrier. Yeah. <laughs> and you just can't pass it. Nothing can go past it. That's it. So yeah. you're not going to get to the moon. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, <clears throat> so you've got this fact that lots of people don't yes. believe. But then again, lots of people don't believe in, in you yeah, know, they, or they do believe in many conspiracies, don't they? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Where do we take it from there? It's then? a conspiracy. So it's a conspiracy community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we did, did talk, sorry, Zach, to, to butt in there, but we did talk about that conspiracy mentality as well. Yeah. You know, there are certain people that just, once they're fixed onto one conspiracy, they will want to follow it up with the next and the next yeah, and I'll next leapfrog next. through uh, conspiracy and, yeah. and want to say they they know the truth they, yeah. Yeah. yeah they know the truth now, not to say that there aren't conspiracies out there not to say that there aren't falsehoods and misguidance from uh, governments etc cetera, etc cetera, but obviously we're talking about the moon landing so stuff. obviously back back onto the moon landing <laughs> uh, from what i've heard a lot of people ask the question who actually filmed the thing on the moon yes like, how was it filmed Right, well, that does throw up a lot of the questions, so... Yeah, well, some of them... Well, you, yeah, go, go you, hit, with it, you yeah. hit a point on uh, some of the most common questions yeah. I saw being raised mm-hmm. when looking into these. Mm. And, yes, one of them was, who shot the event from outside the capsule? Oh, this is when uh, Neil Armstrong's coming down the, the famous, The famous footage, First yeah. Yeah, well, that's easily, easily uh, explained because the actual module itself had loads yeah. of cameras <laughs> yeah. that were attached to the outside and of the module. recording the event. Yeah. Recording the event. There exactly. was nobody outside recording it that was just a remote camera outside yeah you're <laughs> i assume some people are imagining somebody in a spacesuit with a film camera film <laughs> yeah. out there video just got to change my batteries just give yeah. it a second give it a second <laughs> oh, yeah, I need well, that would raise the question he would 
obviously then not be the first person yeah. on the moon over the camera yeah. mammals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so we got that first step onto the surface. Yeah. And uh, nobody was out there recording it. It was a remote camera on the actual lunar landing module, mm. uh, which would then probably lead on, have you got this one now, about the footprints? Since it's the first step. On. Uh, I don't, but these were just some of the, okay. some well, of the most common One of the ones I came up against was a photograph of Neil Armstrong's spacesuit, yeah. which shows the boots, which have nice, clean, flat soles with no mm. grip of any sort on them that right. are displayed in a museum. Yet all the footprints that are shown have, have ridges. A, a ridge, yeah, yeah. So how can that be? Yeah. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> Would there have been something that they put over the spacesuits? Yes. To yeah. walk on the actual surface, because exactly. obviously it's... Because when you go... Do you need grip? Well, it's grip. I mean, obviously you're in very low gravity anyway, but you do need grip. Um, how much on the surface? Uh, I have no idea exactly. But the point was that they had covers for the boots that mm. did have that tread on them. Mm. They needed to have a cover on the boot so that when they were on the moon, as you say, I, mean, I think there's an image... Uh, some footage somewhere where one of them fell over. I have seen that. Oh, wow. yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if that was the Apollo 11 footage I think it was or a later, later one. one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and because of the light gravity, you may well stumble over a rock or something. So I, I assume that they wanted some kind of grip onto the on your boot you, if you went uh, on the surface. But moreover, the cover for the boot, the, or should I say the, the boots they wore in the module, had a cover that went over the top. Mm. Because they were going to get moon dust yeah, stuck on them, which, around, yeah. which is meant to be very much glass-like, and they don't want that floating around in the capsule, in getting the atmosphere, breaking yeah. stuff. Well, getting into <laughs> the electronics or wherever. Because that could that. be disastrous. So if you like, in a kind of a, uh, when, you know, you, you see it in so so many things where you have an airlock, air yeah. you are, and then they have the decontamination in the airlock. Yeah. Off come the boot covers. Compression areas, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. And you get out of the main space suit and you put your flight suit on. There you go. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. So that's that's the, that's the true explanation for that. The boot scenario and the footprint is because they had covers. It's interesting because I never I never came across that. No? No. Well, so that's go. interesting. I've learned that now. Uh, the other one, well, yep. there's two more, three mm -hmm. more, sorry. Okay. Uh, how is the American flag waving? Ah, now that's a good one. Because I uh, think I know this one, but I'll make conspiracy it. <laughs> theorists uh, say that how could the flag be waving if you're in an, uh, a vacuum? There's no wind. Yeah. So well, the, the they had to design a kind of a telescopic pole for the flag. It was all folded up, and mm. you know, and, mm. and it was designed so that they could. And I think they had a bit of a struggle putting the actual flag up when they were trying to get the flag into position and it had a, a bar across the top yeah. to hold it out straight because otherwise the flag would just droop, droop. yeah it would be very good <laughs> float around, so first of all while they're planting the flag you've got movement in the actual this this uh, upside down l shape yeah it's mm. holding the flag there's movement in that so when you have the flag there which is a thin material it's acted upon by what's called inertia so we can all do this. If you're listening at home, you can do this. If you've got a piece of paper or a piece of tissue or something near you, if you pick that up and you just wave it backwards and forwards, when you move your hand to the right, the bottom will be Take, delayed yeah, before yeah. it follows. Yeah, yeah. And the same the other way. Now on Earth, that's because we've got oxygen. Oxygen resistance. is resistance. Okay, So you'd say, okay, so here we are, we're on the moon and we're in a vacuum. But if you put, and I've seen somebody doing this exact experiment, if you put a piece of fabric into a vacuum, sealed vacuum box, take all the oxygen out of it mm -hmm. so there's no resistance to it, mm. and you shake that box, inertia still occurs. Yeah. Inside, you move in the box, yeah. and the fabric will still move because that's called inertia. It will it's move. It's physics, yeah. It's <laughs> physics. Uh, so you don't need wind yeah. on the moon surface to make that flag move. And once it's planted and stopped and everybody's moved away from it, there's no movement in that flag. It would be very hard to, to actually stop it from moving because once you've touched it, that's it. It's going to constantly, because there's no, there's no friction to stop friction it. Friction to from, stop it. There's yeah. no, yeah. Like, where we've got oxygen, which creates resistance. Yeah. No. So, uh, yeah. So when it comes to the wind on the moon blowing the flag, therefore it can't be, it's all about inertia. Yeah. Simple as that.
<laughs> Physics with the Now We Know show. Physics with Now We Know show. So something I heard, even about space travel, mm -hmm. that the way they supposedly faked it uh -huh. was by having all of this equipment and getting like exterior shots of capsules and things mm -hmm. to give the idea of weightlessness is filming it in a swimming pool with um, green screens underwater <laughs> interesting well i would i, I, I mean i'm I, filmmakers do this that is just theories days. i've i've heard okay filmmakers do use that technique even even these days they do uh, film underwater mm. Uh, yeah, you can see people's hair moving, and like I think in Aquaman and stuff, people's hair are moving. I'm not sure whether they've done. I think that's probably mm. a bit CGI. Yeah, but there are ones where they do do it in the the tanks down at uh, Pinewood Studios. Harry yeah, Potter, yeah. a lot yeah. of the fourth Harry Potter films, yeah. all yeah, where underwater. they're swimming underwater. Yeah, where he's in the the lake, isn't he? Yeah, the challenge. Yeah, right. so there's bits that they do film. And yeah, that's a possibility. And in fact, they train underwater astronauts, train underwater. Um, but you'll wait if you see any of that footage, you'll see oxygen bubbles coming coming out and so it's a kind of like a fair assumption to that idea i also think in 69 that would have been very hard to green screen because oh, back then that wasn't even a no it wasn't that was a very and if you're thinking of them filming it mm. you think about the way water reacts they're on the moon mm -hmm. if you were thinking that you're on say sand on the, on the bottom of the ocean and you kicked it up Mm. It would it would be floating around a cloud. in the water like, yeah, a, cloud. like a dusty cloud, yeah. And that the, that doesn't happen. I can't think of seeing that happening in the footage. At all. It would take a while for it to go back down to level as well, wouldn't it? Underwater, mm. it would keep kind of yeah. flying. Yeah. <laughs> and perhaps even light refraction, for because obviously the, the the set, if it was underwater, would need to be lit. I don't know whether water would. It would refract kind of, light in a weird way. I, I'd assume way. the camera as well would kind of have to pick be. up the kind of. Differences underwater. Mm. Mm. Well, I have seen cameras in like big like, underwater boxes. Boxes, yeah. yeah. It's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. I've I thought never, I found I've, it interesting. I've never heard that, so that was interesting. Uh, the other one was why do why do the shadows look like they are the result of multiple light sources? Ah, good question. And I think if I okay, what we've got to take into consideration when you are standing on the surface of the moon, which is something that I haven't done. <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to. Um, but you are literally being bombarded by light from the sun. Yeah. Uh, the moon, oh, sorry, not the moon, you're on the moon. The, the, All right. <laughs> when, when you, okay, let's reverse it. You're standing on planet Earth. Yeah. It's nighttime. It's a full moon. Mm. The moon does not shine. Okay, the moon does not give off light at all in any way shape or form all it's doing is reflecting sunlight yes. okay so if you're if you've got moonlight and you go oh the moon's energy you're just look, you're just being bathed in reflected sunlight okay yeah. in fact you'll get more of that energy during the day than you will in the full moon Hence why but the thing cold. is <laughs> but the thing is on a full moon clear sky if you look around you you'll be cast in the shadow Other yeah you'll still be able to see to okay. a degree now you're on the moon which has got no atmosphere and the light from the sun is beaten down on the on the surface but there are other reflective surfaces on the moon rocks can bounce light off the but well, the reason i bring the the moon and reversing it to the planet earth is because you've got the planet earth that is also reflecting sunlight onto the moon yeah okay so you've got light coming in from different angles as it is hmm. and that may well explain why there yeah. are different shadows i'm probably not explaining i'm not a physicist in that uh, uh, like specialist in that that respect but even the even the 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 uh suits themselves mm. being white are going to reflect, reflect in, yeah. it, it, light in a didn't the um the actual module have reflective metal on it as well to keep away the radiation? well it certainly they, would have yeah, had they probably some have kind of uh, shielding panels. from yeah. radiation did they have lights on it as well possibly that uh, could be another <laughs> i don't know do they need a green and red light on it just in, <laughs> just in case they have any other passing vehicles <laughs> yeah. indicators yeah. it's unlikely that there would literally be only one light source if you know what i mean they would from a conspiracy theorist point of view which i'm not personally yeah. um that's quite an easy one to explain i mean I in the studio you would have lots of different lights yeah, exactly, and, and yeah. you can have but uh, again they can cancel themselves out i think uh okay I don't know. I don't know if I've answered that one clearly enough. Maybe some. You've given it your best shot. I don't you know, think it's. But you've got. You've got. You've got. You've got. You've got at least. Um, they're on the moon. They're on the surface of the moon, which is lit by the sun. The moon. We always see the same surface. Uh, when you look at the the moon from Earth, it's always the same. We call the opposite side of the moon the dark side, which is incorrect because mm -hmm. that is 
like it's just the far side of the moon it's not the dark side of the moon it's the far side of the moon it's just we don't see it because the moon doesn't ro ro rotate around on its axis so we're it's in a fixed orbit yeah so we're seeing that one side of the moon all the time which means if you think about it if you then therefore land on the moon in that light what are you going to see up in the sky above you yeah exactly. you're going to see the earth <clears throat> yeah and the earth and the is sun. going to be reflecting <laughs> light from the sun and you're going to have the sun as well coming in from another angle multiple light sources yeah, multiple light sources yeah fair enough <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's really interesting because i don't actually know anything about this um but i was hoping you could i'll give it my best shot so, <laughs> so, so far i've become the, uh, so far, I've I'll, I'll, the guru I'll, of uh, explaining well it things. just shows that you're very passionate about it but it did happen well i suppose for me you say passionate about, i'm passionate about a uh, passionate about uh, astronomy i'm passionate about space exploration and you know, being somebody that knows we landed on the... I'm going to be terrible and stick my nose out saying I know that we landed on, on, on the uh, moon. moon. But, um, yeah, passionate about it. Yeah, I'm going to look from it from yeah, exactly, the yeah. expl uh, explaining these And anomalies. you've done a marvellous job so far. <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure I'm saying it. People out there listening aren't, 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 aren't taking in. I'll see I'm if saying. I can chime in next. <laughs> well, it's going to get very weird. Okay, so what's this, this next one? Um, yeah, this one interested me the most because I don't really understand what it means. Mm -hmm. Why is the letter C visible on one of the rocks? <laughs> I keep using the conspiracy word, but there's a theory. Uh, there was a photograph that shows a moon rock okay. with a clear letter C on it. C. Okay. And supposedly it's because, and you've been on movie sets, but, well, in fact all of us have been on movie yes. sets, yeah. and props have numbers and, have codes. Numbers and codes on yeah. them. And supposedly that was a mistake. It was a letter C, it was a number for a prop, and it's clearly seen on this rock. Apparently, oh, well, yeah, I, I, I've heard, now you've mentioned that, I heard similar things about other rocks as well that had numbers and stuff on them. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the famous C. We'll stick with one rock to start. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen any of the others, so uh, so I couldn't tell you about yeah. any of the others, but that one I've definitely seen. And there is a very simple answer to that, because what you're looking at is not the original photo. Um, okay, A lot of... Uh, <laughs> plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. NASA has a limited amount of photographs. Yeah. Those photograph photographical images are then doled out to the media in general and go all around the world and they get re reproduced and reproduced and reproduced over and over again. Over and over again. If you look at the original NASA photograph of that rock, not only is the photograph clearer, but there is no C on it. And what it is deemed is that C is maybe a fleck of dust or hair or something which has yeah. Onto Caught in the, the printing system, plate yeah. or just a whatever. Just a, it's just yeah. an, so it's kind of like an anomaly. But if you compare compare the C rock with the original, there is no C. So it's kind of like the degradation of videos. If you copy a video over and over again, yeah, it will degrade. If, if you did time, it through yeah. a fax machine, if you put a fax through, it, it will continue to degrade. And, and then somewhere along the line, you might do a print out of something and there's a hair that's got on it. And... Yeah, because back then there would have been multiple copies of the same photo. And yeah. something like, and, as and you say, would, a hair could have literally just got on one would, of the prints. You wouldn't be emailing digital photo photographs exactly, to each other yeah. because that yeah. wasn't a thing. We didn't have digital photography yeah. then. It would all be, if you needed a reproduction of a photo, Graph, that photograph would have probably be scanned through a lens from an original and then yeah. that would have been developed onto another one and lost. But people might think in a digital sense, oh, that's easy. But back then there was no digital photography as such. Or uh, photo know, editing or anything. Yeah, photo editing no. that way. So, you know. And to, to a degree, it seems like it would be for such a unique and specific thing that it would be kind of negligent to miss that. That was one. Of, that was going to be one of my points, actually. Yeah. Like you if, think if, that it would be so meticulously planned if it, oh, well, if it was being faked, if it was nothing faked. would slip through the net. Yeah. yeah. It'll be exact as you say. Yeah. Everything would be checked over. You're trying to fool the world. Like yeah. you're trying to fool everyone in the world. Well, if you're trying to fool <clears> the world uh, with the technology you've got at that time when it comes to filming and um, most people are watching this on televisions or you know if they've got a television to watch it on you know because mm -hmm. not everybody had tvs and the quality on a uh, cathode ray tube television is did brilliant they have and things color tv back uh, i think the americans did uh, the american uh, whether that had gotten it i mean when i was a kid in the 70s i think it was probably mid to late 70s before we actually got color tv in the house prior to that we all were everything in my life was black and white so yeah. <laughs> if i was watching things it, i remember things in black and white out of interest do you have any memories or did your parents have any memories um i 
don't know. I haven't asked my mother. Was uh, it celebrated at all? Well, I was born in 66, so I was... You would have been very young, but, yeah. yeah. So I don't have any recollection I of it. I can imagine so. it probably being very, like, well... Yes. Monumental. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's monumental because the Ru- uh, because basically USA are sticking it up to the Russians and saying, yes, you know. But just seeing a, just seeing a man go to the moon must have just been... Mind oh, yeah. back in the day. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Because even what we have now is quite and, and again, in comparison. <laughs> again, we've said this before. Sometimes I believe uh, that some people can't comprehend, comprehend yeah. certain things. Maybe certain things are just too yeah. unbelievable. Out of their field of vision. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the universe is so vast, I can't comprehend it. Time is you know, yeah. too yeah. vast. The enormity of existence. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, if you're somebody who believes that the... Uh, whole earth uh, mankind and all the animals on it were created six thousand years ago how on earth can you comprehend that yeah. dinosaurs were roaming the earth 65 million years ago Ooh, we'll have to it, do another podcast yeah, on so, dinosaurs so all we would do a dinosaur one but uh, so you know the individual human some people just might not have the capacity to take on board that so even the moment if you were sitting there in front of a TV or outside a shop window when the TV's inside the shop window are showing the, the, yeah. the, the images being broadcast and for that first time, it might be that it's just so unbelievable. You just can't comprehend it. You can't it, comprehend yeah. it. And you, so it is exactly that, unbelievable. Yeah. And you can have somebody standing next to you who is thinking, this is fantastic. You know, I'm, 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 this is, I've always wanted to see man get to the moon. And they, you know, so yeah. you have two people stand next to each other. One says, no, Unbelievable, so it isn't believable. One person, this is fantastic, totally believable, blah, blah, blah. I'd be interested to know, obviously we mentioned that about 20% of people don't believe we went to the moon. I'd be interested to know, back in 69, how many people at the time when it was on didn't believe it or did believe it. Well, <laughs> it would have been interesting if that, if that number's risen or fallen over time. Yeah, that would be an interesting With fact. the rise of the internet and being know. able to share well, videos. I think, and things. Well, I think that's another thing, the rise of the internet, because you get so many fake videos on the internet. Yeah, exactly. Fake it's photos. It's kind of the age of misinformation, um, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. We are living in uh, the, everything that you look at, everything that you can't, you can't, you have to take everything. With a pinch yeah. of salt. Definitely, or well, a big pinch of salt these days because everything from a picture on the cover of a magazine which presents a, a model looking perfect yeah. mm. when in fact all they've done is they've photoshopped their, they've just got a big spot on their chin at that particular yeah. day of the photo shoot or mm. they've tucked the waist in a little bit, increased the bust. What you, Everything we look at it's manufactured. It could be yeah. manufactured and false yeah. and including the information. And if you've got people out there that want to push false information for their own agenda, then they're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at, again, I'm harking back to the current situation we have with Ukraine, but if you live in Russia, do you believe what's happening in the Ukraine because you watch the Russian, the only thing you get to see is the Russian news. That is a very good example. And you, you, you've seen interviews with Russians who yeah. say, no, 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 we're saving the Ukrainians. We're going there and we're liberating, rescue, liberating them. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. helping them. We're taking them food parcels. We're taking, we're rescuing them from their, their, their Nazi dictators. Yeah. And the rest of the world's looking in and going, uh, guys, the guys yeah. <laughs> hang on. Hang on a second. You're believing total yeah. you nonsense. Know, uh, nonsense. And But there you go. There you've got a perfect thing. So you say, at the time, did people believe it? Well, yeah, people are there and the they propaganda. Have no, no reason to question no, it. No reason yeah. to question it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, whether whether at the time, if it had been faked, you would have still had millions of people watching that and going, God, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is exactly, if you don't believe that the moon landings were real, is exactly what you're going to say. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, anything else you've got on there? Um, I've got a big conspiracy. No, no. Little, 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 let's <laughs> oh, okay. stick with the little, the little things. Uh, no, that, they were the most common questions. Well, I don't know if anyone else um, had any. It's not Zach. really... It's Okay. There's one thing. It's quite marvellous, the fact that you're holding in your hand a phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's more technology in that phone than there was on the space shuttles at that point. Yeah. Well, that is quite marvellous. It was the... the just the, 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 just yeah. the, just the, the Saturn V rockets, wasn't it? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's marvellous to think of that. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, I suppose it's comparing the technology of a nuclear submarine mm. to a World War II U-boat, which mm-hmm. some of them were even steam-driven yeah. <laughs> and had huge funnels on them mm. that actually sank because the water went down the funnels. Oh no, it's funny, we're all film fans yeah. here. It's funny talking about, um, I don't know if you're aware of the famous film, A Trip to the Moon. Trip to the Moon, well, the oh, black and white one. black and yeah. white. Yeah, 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 where, the, where the, it hits the moon in the face. Well, yeah, but they put the... They put the 
the capsule in a big cannon and just shoot, shoot it at it. the moon. <laughs> exactly. And this was 1920 something, I believe. Yeah, possibly, yeah, really possibly early. earlier. It kind of reminds me of uh, the much, much later one, which was the first Men in the Moon. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we had the yeah. uh, anti gravity pa- paint, you know, which was a brilliant movie. Great steampunk story. Yeah, great, great steampunk. Uh, I'm trying to think what the aliens were called that were living in the moon. Selenites. Selenites, yeah. Ray Harryhausen. Yeah, good Ray Harryhausen. Very there. good Ray. If you haven't seen it, go and watch First Men in the Moon. Um, so, you, your comment on that one? You were bringing that up for, you were saying about the the, the trip to the moon. Yeah, yeah. It's just how how that's how we thought we would get to the moon oh, back in the yeah. day. How how, we would call, how how technology how, is how technology has changed since yeah. then. And because yeah. we can silly fire guns. a cannonball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all we need is a bigger cannon. <laughs> There's a famous picture, isn't there? Of I, I forget the lady's name, but she's standing next to the code, the book of code that she inputted into the computer. Computer, and it's literally taller than her. It's just this giant. Stack of paper. Yeah. It's I like mean, you can do that all on here. It's all digital, well, yeah. That's what, I mean, you know, that's why. I mean, you if you were an astronaut back then, or a cosmonaut even, yeah, you were on a wing and a prayer. I would. Yeah, imagine. yeah. Far more risky. I mean, you, when, when the Apollo fourteen mission had a it, the, the blowout on their oxygen supplies because they mm. had to come back, um, and they had to make so many calculations right down to the, the yeah. most minutest thing and mm. jerry rig the the oxygen the oxygen scrubbers just. To get enough oxygen yeah, because because it's not like the movies. They can in movies nowadays they can fly off space any which way. Yeah, any which way. Yeah, just turn automatically. On, turn on the <laughs> yeah the, the uh, hyperdrive. Well, I was just thinking of the uh, force gravity and what they call yeah, it. Yeah, no, artificial gravity. Artificial gravity. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, so that means we can film it and everybody's not having to float around anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah or even so. just like sound as well. You're in Star Wars mm. and everything. You've got the sound in space, which was never a thing. <laughs> oh yeah, it's kind of an odd one that one because obviously a space battle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can imagine it should like be dead silent. Not yeah. non diegetic music like the background music mm-hmm. and stuff that that would work but it's interesting that you mentioned well that. it's funny another funny thing people uh, imitate being in weightlessness yeah. mm. they imitate it by moving really slowly very slowly yeah, yeah. but that's not the case you no, move exactly you the, same the same speed, speed. <laughs> it's just you float um, but no you've actually just brought up with the with the space battles and explosions and the mm. noise in space yeah. one of the things I came across was uh, to explain why we haven't been to the moon or actually up in space mm. is because Rockets wouldn't work in a in a vacuum, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, okay, that was one of the other things. Yeah, it wouldn't work in a vacuum, uh, but they do, because unlike a like a jet engine where you're putting something in the front of the engine and sucks sh- in and blows out, uh, blows yeah. out, uh, you've already got your fuel. Your fuel yeah. You don't need to be in an oxygen rich uh, yeah. environment. environment. You can burn that fuel in a void. Yeah. Mm. So you don't need. Uh, so yes, rockets do work in space. So that was a simple one, but people still use it. They say no, it can't happen because you can't. I think I think uh, that the argument, flames wouldn't burn. Yeah, in, in, I think that argument came up on the flat Earth again. Yeah, did it? Yeah, I think it did. Oh, right, okay. I keep seeing posts. Uh, interesting. An interesting one that came up similar to that was the Van Allen belt. Yeah, uh, we can discuss that one if you want to. Right yes, now. So, I so, understand, but I would like you to. Okay, so the Van explain. Allen. So our Earth has got a magnetic field. Yes. That magnetic field helps to protect us from the radiation from the sun. But it is full of charged a- uh, atoms that are basically harmful to organic life. Yeah. And if you had a circle in front of you, uh, pretend that that is the planet Earth, you would have like a, a figure of eight on its side with these this magnetic field going out each side of the planet. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at the poles, because you know the mag- magnetic pole. So at the poles, south and north pole, is where it's at its thinnest. Mm-hmm. Right. And then it balloons out and comes back in again. So you've got got this magnetic field that is full of charged particles, which is dangerous to organic life. Now, mm. I think uh, Professor Van Allen, uh, who um, obviously is, is named after, I think he's even said maybe it's not as harmful as he first thought it would be. Yeah. But <clears throat> putting that to one side, the point is... This is one of the other things. It's suggested that, of course, we've had lots of uh, cosmonauts and astronauts in low Earth orbit. So in low Earth orbit, you stay away from the Van Allen belt or its most dangerously highly charged areas of it, the, the thick, red the zone. Thickest part. Call it the red zone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're in low Earth orbit, where currently you have the uh, International Space Station, for example, mm-hmm. is away from that. Still shielded against radiation, but not harmful to uh, humans um, so how on earth can you therefore 
step out of the Van Allen belt and off into space to go to the moon. Mm-hmm. You can't do it because it's going to kill anybody that does that. Well, not exactly true because the launch of manned flights out into space, into high orbit and beyond, always go through that thinnest part yeah. near the poles. They go through the thinnest part of the Van Allen belt so they get a very small Dose. exposure to yeah. those charged particles. As opposed to going through the thickest part of the shell. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, from the information I read on it, it's a, the amount of dosage that an, a, a, an astronaut would get going through there is about the same as if you had two CT scans. Which is like a daily thing. You know, for, it, for wouldn't recommend, yeah. it wouldn't recommend you to have that on a daily basis, but if you're going well, I mean, out, it, it's something we use yeah. on a daily basis. Oh, we use that on yeah, a daily yeah. basis, but yeah. uh, if you've ever been to the dentist and had a, an x-ray, they ran out the room. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you go to uh, uh, the hospital and have an x-ray, they hide behind their screens. Why? Because they're exposed to it on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. prolonged and exposure can have a neg- negative, negative effect. effect. Mm. You're not. You're just in there one, one, once in a blue moon. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's the same with being an asteroid. You go out, you get a dose. Perhaps I mean, obviously, you, you've got you're in a, a shield capsule. Um, you're in a, a I don't know the, the actual suit. made makeup of, of the flight suits or anything, mm. but um, yeah, and they have to protect the equipment as well yeah. against radiation because that that can affect uh, electronics, etc. But you're still getting such a low dose that you're not go continually going through that. It's just you you're going through out that thin part of the Van Allen belt and off you go to the moon and then when you come back in you're re-entering again through the thin part so it's neither here nor there. Yeah, cause that's an interesting bit of information because I haven't really heard about that. Yeah. And as I said, I don't know exactly the ins and outs of it but I'm told that they are starting to feel that maybe it's not quite as deadly as it's been made out. But again, to technology... Moon. The shielding can shielding improve. could improve, yeah, of course. Yeah. You, it might be possible, uh, if not even already, I don't know, because I'm, um, I'm not Elon Musk or uh, Jeff Bezos or NASA. <laughs> or, or and, and everybody blames Ra- NASA for, for, for these conspiracies. NASA covers big, up. It's NASA. the big them. Yeah. But you've got you know, space agencies, China, space All agencies, the world. India, yeah, you've got yeah. Japan, you've got space agencies Just because everywhere. it's the closest one to you. <laughs> you know, but it's always NASA that's getting the getting it in the neck about these things. Well, it seems like, as we mentioned, there's like Elon Musk and everything, it seems like the big businesses are starting to take over space travel. Right. <laughs> Which is interesting <laughs> because, again, if we think about that, we are on the verge of a return to the moon. Mm, right. Because before, it's always been political. Yeah. Why did we go to the moon in the first instance? Because it's a political one-upmanship. But then uh, how can you justify such a huge investment in taking a couple of people to the moon when other people are um, you know, suffering from recession, they, they haven't got any Starving, food, they, yeah. you know, they, yeah. no housing. No, they're going to say, no, we're not sending There's, you know, a, there's an to imbalance there. It's totally imbalanced. So when, it's, when the political pressure is everybody's behind us to get that one up and ship great but when it's not then you're not going to get the funding for it yeah. however with jeff bezos <laughs> with blue origin and with elon musk and uh, SpaceX. spacex and even richard branson with his uh, virgin, galactic. virgin galactic they're commercial yeah, yeah it's and kind that's of something we've never had before it, we've never had that before uh, only in movies like you know, Wayland Utani in Aliens and things, yeah. where yeah. you've got where you've got the company, yeah. and so now you've got this push for people to go out into space. Uh, primarily, I would say, well, at the, at the first instance, as we all know, tourism, yeah, because they're already sending people up into low Earth orbit for a brief amount of time, uh, just so they say, yeah, we've experienced weightlessness, we've experienced being in space, we've looked down on on the Earth, and they've um, got to make their money back somehow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they're doing that, but it's great publicity as well. Yes, I mean, you know, you're talking about the richest m- people on the planet, and of course, there's other research things going into that. I mean, look at the advance uh, in space technology, you know, space travel technologies. It is the booster rockets land themselves now. Yes, and yeah. they reuse them. You know, uh, it's. I it's thought a, I was amazing uh, the first time I saw that. I thought absolutely. that was just. Yeah, crazy. You, if you watch that. You would say that that's a lie. That's CGI. Yeah. That is. They go back to our original no, 1969. <laughs> they've never been up there. They're not doing, it, and that's that could that could never work. It's you know? CGI. Well, it would be CGI okay. nowadays. <laughs> um, so, but but what we've got is uh, a push towards space tourism, mm. uh, which means people want to go out there, and the more people do something, I mean, can you imagine when people first uh, flew? 
Mm. And then the f I, I would say, apart from very small planes, the first probably larger, uh, tell me if I'm wrong on this one, but the larger capacity airline type thing would have been probably airships. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm imagining. Yeah. 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 Small, yeah. Smaller planes may have maybe taken you know, a few passengers. Hot maybe. air balloons. Hot air balloons. But if you think you've got the... If, if you're traveling, you've got the big zeppelins or whatever. Yeah, it'd be luxury. Wouldn't that it? would be luxury, and you wouldn't be a an average Joe. No, you wouldn't be a. a, a I'm saying, okay, I uh, I worker. work in the chip shop. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fisherman out yeah. on a fishing boat. I, I I'm a bus driver. It'd be that luxury. There's no way I'm going to get yeah. up on, and go on one of them tickets on a zeppelin. Yeah, it's out of my pay range. Mm. And then as we progress and things get cheap, you know, now you can fly to Spain for 25 quid yeah. on EasyJet. In a couple yeah. of hours. Yeah, couple hours. Cars were like a luxury yeah. when they first came and out. Now and now are, everyone's driving. Well, it's almost there. Not a luxury. Yeah, it's a necessity no, yeah, for most, everyone's yeah. most people. So, and we're seeing a change on that as um, well. And so, electricity. Mm -hmm. so where people you know, would find something like a, an airplane ticket, air travel, a complete luxury that they could never afford, now... Yeah. That, that kind of transportation is open to anybody. Again, it's a daily thing. That, it's just a daily thing. Yeah. People go to work on it. <laughs> you don't question it. Yeah. No, don't question it. Um, yeah, you know, it was back in the, I don't know when package holidays started. I assume package holidays probably took off through the 60s and 70s. But I mean, people would go on holiday here in the UK. This is where we're, we're uh, broadcasting, doing our podcast from. You, your holiday would be going to Scarborough, Skidness, yeah. Bognor Regis, you know, places like that. Hunstanton. And then to, to think of going to... The Costa del Sol <laughs> yeah. ain't never going to happen. Yeah. Okay. But then, tour operators get the price down, and the next thing you know, package holidays, and you're off. Yeah. To to where you never thought you'd ever get before, and yeah. it becomes cheap. And so that that's where we're back to the moon landings. We've got uh, a push towards tourism in space, mm -hmm. and if they can go to the moon, and they can get tourists to the moon, if moon, they can moon put, holiday. <laughs> if they yeah exactly, if they can put a base on the moon, yeah, yeah. People, that would help things. People would do that. I think it's NASA that are looking towards putting, and again with NASA, it's uh, government backed, so it's all about funding. Yeah. Whereas obviously uh, the commercial companies don't have, well, they have to obviously be funded, but they don't have the restrictions where they've got to go cap in hand to the government. Every time you pay government. for your Amazon parcel, you're giving <laughs> exactly Jeff, Jeff Bezos, Bezos another yeah. boost up to the moon. <laughs> um, but I think it's the, uh, I think it's NASA that are pushing for the lunar orbiter. They want to put. I've heard this. Yeah. They want to put a, a permanent um, satellite satellite base, yeah. like, like like the International Space Station, which will orbit the mm. moon. I heard they're going to bring down the International Space Station bit by piece, mm -hmm. bit by bit. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So every country has their own sort of parts of it. Parts of it. Yeah. So they'll send people up to grab them, take them back down. I think it's about the size of a football pitch. I think they said the actual whole thing, which oh, wow. isn't really that big at all, really, when you think about it. No, but there's a huge amount of space junk up there. Exactly. Satellites yeah. are out of commission and things. And one of the, we should be talking about this right now. <laughs> the, the problem you've got uh, in low Earth orbit, especially, and if you ever look at one of those um, sort of computer generated images of the satellites that go around the planet, it's just like absolutely crazy. You yeah, know, it's a cage, them, isn't it? Really? Uh, and, and if you had one of those hit another one. Yeah, it's that break. cascade effect, isn't it? Exactly. The cascade yeah. effect could literally knock everything out. <laughs> like gravity. The, mo the, the actual, the movie. Yeah. 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 So it would knock everything out and one thing would lead to another and you get the cascade effect and then the whole of the Earth's low orbit you can't uh, get you can't get through it. And then everything we're talking everything, about things are flying space, space tourism just won't yeah. be a thing anymore. Things would be flying around at that literally thousands of like bullets, thousands yeah. of miles, a puncher through any type of craft you'd want to yeah. put up there. Unless you've got like significant shielding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So which, which will set us back yeah. however many hundred years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you think about weight, when it comes to space travel, weight is the big issue because every ounce costs a silly amount of money to get yeah. it off the ground to be uh, yeah to to get it off against Earth's gravity and get it out and break out of uh, Earth's gravity. And hope everything goes to plan. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why there's companies, commercial companies at the moment, that are looking to put um, satellites up there to capture space junk and to bring it down in yeah. order to clear up, which mm. is a damn good idea, to be honest. Yeah, otherwise we're going to have, you know, who knows what on our hands. But space tourism, let's not get off the track too much. <laughs> space tourism, if they do go there or they're going for scientific purposes to do the lunar orbiter, which is meant to be then a jump off for Mars, mm -hmm. uh, and we all know that... Uh, uh, Elon Musk's uh, SpaceX. His his focus is I want to get people to Mars. Being, yeah. I want to go down in history as being the person who managed to get people to Mars. Um, yeah. So it's becoming more accessible. So who's to say that just like the twenty five pound plane tickets now, yeah, but space travel in fifty years time is not 
yeah. accessible to everyday people. I've just got a job on Mars. I'm just going to take, yeah. take my flight to yeah, Mars okay. tomorrow six, morning. Six, get, six, get your ass to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> Total it. recall reference there. Exactly. So uh, so now we're back to the, the moon landings, though, because can you imagine the issue if you then have people go to Mars, uh, to Mars, I'm going to Mars, we go to the moon to visit the landing sites, mm. and they're not there. Wow, plot the, twist. <laughs> the flag's not there. The or it's made of cheese. The footprints aren't there. The, the, the lunar rover that they took yeah. on a further mission, the, the tracks and the rover aren't there. Now, there's arguments. Okay, so we're leading on to these little small things you, that we've been discussing about why it's fake or, and then trying to explain why it's not fake. Um, mirrors. Mirrors, Were yeah. placed on the surface. You can bounce lasers off them. And you can bounce lasers off them. And the, the initial, I think the initial reason for that was so they could get a perfect measurement of how far how the far it moves is, yeah. away from the Earth. <clears throat> but they use them for other scientific purposes. And, and, and students, I think, can literally... You know, as long as your laser's powerful enough, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can do it. Um, but then that's no the argument on the the fact that that does no proof that humans have landed on the moon is because they could have been put down by automated missions. They didn't need a human to to yeah. put those there. Okay, so that's a fair point. Yeah, it's a fair mm. point. Yeah, if you wanted to put something on uh, a mirror on the surface of the moon. You don't have to have somebody actually carry it and put it down. Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it would be conclusive when we can actually say there's like a permanent presence yeah. on the moon. Yeah. Or the first child is born on Mars. That's the one thing that's... Now, there are there are other things. Yeah. There are other things. Well, if you're a flat earther, we've never been to Mars because Mars doesn't... You can't go to Mars. So, <laughs> so all the rovers that have already gone there, it's all, that's all made up. It's just CGI. Yeah, CGI. Uh, that doesn't exist. Uh, so we've gone past that. So uh, we're into... We can, so, so now we're in the realms of we can do space travel, but there are certain factors that are maybe stopping us from doing space travel. Mm. Um, so let's have a look at some of these other factors. Uh, you've mentioned about light on the on the surface. Uh, there is one argument that why is it in the photographs? Mm. They're all perfectly focused. You know, they the astronauts had a camera mounted on their chests. Yeah. But all the photographs we see are like in po- perfect focus. Mm. Anybody want to discuss that one? What was the camera technology like back then? Well, certainly not like it is yeah. now. Um, so I'm not a camera specialist I couldn't tell you exactly but again if you're going to send a mission to the moon you're going to make sure you want to get the best photographs you can yeah. get I know NASA did have very very powerful cameras at that point because they were used they had lenses I know that were used in subsequent films of the time mm-hmm. mm. um, and they're very good at like dispersing light mm-hmm. so I wonder if that kind of factors into it I'm sure it may well do but if you want a really simple answer to that one is that Loads of the photographs weren't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they actually weren't in focus. Yes. What we get to see are the ones that actually came out well. Yeah. You've got your 35 millimeter camera. You've gone on holiday. You're in the Costa <laughs> del Sol. You're taking your photographs. There's, there's, you know, there's mum and dad on the beach. There's Auntie Jean, blah, blah. <laughs> And you get back, you get, your, get it processed, and then you get a sticker on it saying, this one's out of focus. Oh. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. That's exactly it. You don't put those in the photo album. You don't put them in the photo album, <laughs> and you don't say, oh, look, this is us on the moon, but unfortunately there's a sticker from the uh, processors <laughs> that says this is out of focus and poor quality. There appears to be a, a, a letter C on that rock as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it just, it just gives <laughs> exactly. the conspiracy theorists kind of fuel if you show them those. Yeah, They'll be like, so, oh, no, so, definitely not so real. Actually, actually, when it comes to the amount of photographs that were taken, we get to see the ones that were... Mm. Really good, mm-hmm. and the other ones that are blurry or out of focus. What? Why look at them? <laughs> why look at them? They are. I think I believe they are, uh, are available. Yeah. To be seen, but they're just like well, they're just they're probably in a store cupboard. Who so. really wants to look at the blurred but, photo? Uh, of them. They're, they're, the nice, clear, crispy photographs that we see are not crispy. They're not all. Of course, they're, they're not the, fo- the they're only th- photographs that are taken. Not every single photograph was in. Yeah, they're the photos that you want to see yeah. yeah and I would probably go as far as to say that now we've got digital technology I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they've probably done ones restorations you, ones you see and you can punch up on the internet now are probably done restorations and cleared oh, yeah. I mean let's face it you get a movie now that's the, 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 that's that came filmed. out in the 80s yeah and, and, stuff. and they've, yeah. they've now put it out in 4k restoration yeah. you know Perfect. So. I was thinking, obviously, James Cameron's new Avatar is filmed in, like, one of the deepest trenches on Earth. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we'll eventually get... Really? Yeah. I wonder if we'll eventually get, like, a film that's filmed on the moon. <laughs> That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. But I can imagine that happening. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you're young enough to see that. I'd like to hopefully see that myself. I'm not getting anywhere yet. I've got my fingers crossed. I want to see humans get to Mars 
Mars, that's what I want to see. Dream come true. That would be a dream come true to see, see them get to Mars. Um, we could talk about Mars projects in another podcast. Which oh, yeah. Really I'd be up for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that would be a really good subject. Um, so anyway, so with the photos, no, not all of them were in focus. You've got to see the best yes. ones. Okay. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> another thing with the photographs, mm. why are there no stars? Okay, I, you look I at the photograph, that, yeah. and they're black. Blackness behind them. No stars. But surely you're in space. And... With no atmosphere to obscure the stars, you should be able to see all these little stars in the background. Why are there no stars? Explanation, please. Uh, I think the one I've heard is to do with a light, uh, a uh, street lamp. So, for example, if you're standing on the street and there's a street lamp above you mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you look up to the stars, it's quite hard to see the stars because there is a giant light, yeah, is it the light of pointing the, into your eyes. <laughs> light of the Earth. Brilliant. Okay, that that's a actually that is a very good example mm. to explain it, and it is as simple as that. You're on the surface of the moon, light is being basically reflected around you. So you know you've got that sunlight coming in, hitting the moon's surface. So that's one source of light. Yeah, you've got the reflected light off of the planet Earth hitting the moon from a different angle, and then the light itself that's hitting the moon is bouncing off the moon. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> And literally obliterating everything. Now, yeah, that might you might say that's an easy, easy thing to, to yeah, pass it off and say there's so much light that's why you can't see the stars. Mm. What I'd say to you is, if you go outside on a starry night with your digital camera and take a picture of the sky, you'll get nothing. Yeah, you'll get nothing. You need to put it into usually pro photo mode, and you need to extend the exposure. Yeah, have no wobble on your camera best thing to do is uh, if you've got a flat surface you put it on the most extended uh, time lapse you've got put a timer I say a 10 second five second delay on it push the shutter button it gives you time to put your camera down mm -hmm. otherwise it'll start taking the photograph straight away and yeah. then you'll get all the hand movement in. Yeah. put it down move out the way and let it do its thing mm -hmm. come back to it and look at that photograph and you'll have a lovely starry sky photograph yeah. because you need that's the, the stars, although we can see them with our eyes, the light is so weak mm -hmm. that it's very easy, like your street lamp, uh, to obliterate them. And if you're in a city, you probably don't even see the stars, you know. So if you're walking down a city street, you're looking up and you're just not seeing anything because of the street lighting. Yeah. Uh, and people even complain that when you are near to large uh, urban environments that the light pollution yeah, cities is yeah. and you can be in the countryside but the light pollution is still knocking out yeah. you can't, still, you yeah. can't see the stars so now you imagine you're on the moon you're taking a photograph which is not on a time delay so there's no length of exposure to try and take in that, that light, light. Mm. just a click photograph you're not going to see anything because the light sources around are so strong it just looks black yeah and that that's that's not making it up that's fact yeah. okay that's that's a fact so you know that's why there's no stars in the photos there i think go. i think uh there might be uh in a later mission i think they put a uh, camera in a shaded area right uh, with an exposure a longer exposure so basically what you just, and did get yeah. photographs of the stars from the moon but it was a specific camera in a shaded area with a time delay yeah I always find that picture fascinating where it's the picture from the moon of Earth and it just looks so tiny. It does. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. we're all on there. In the, so in the like infinite everything... cosmos, yeah. we are <laughs> so our, small. There's little blue ball. Everything you've ever known is on that little tiny yeah. dot over there. Yeah. It's crazy. So all, all, all of your problems and everything yeah. just kind of puts it into kind of a perspective. Yeah. Like in the entire universe. <laughs> yeah. Does it matter? It is very hard to comprehend. Isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. does, which makes me kind of angry when human beings can be so horrible to each other. And destructive, yeah. yeah. And destructive rather than looking at the fact that you've been given this wonderful gift. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and, and As you say, in the previous podcast, you said it was a miracle to exist. To even be here in the first yeah. place is insane. Uh, so, you know, for people to be spending that time, precious time, you know, arguing and... Arguing and fighting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wars. Such a, yeah. Yeah, it's such a waste. <laughs> we get all philosophical now, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, so, no stars in it. We've done the Van Allen belt. I'm just going to have a look at my uh, research and see if there's anything we haven't missed before we move on, because I know that Jack's got a particular uh, thing. Right, we've got... Uh, yeah, Van Allen belt. Yep. I think it's time to move I on. Think, I think we're good.
So unless there's anything that we've missed, which I'm sure we probably have. Please comment below. Yeah, please comment below if there's something that we've missed. But I think we've managed to escape Earth's atmosphere now. Mm -hmm. We've managed to get through the Van Allen belt. We've managed to land on the surface. We've managed to explain things on the surface like the wind blowing the flag and no stars in the sky and the different light sources. And clarity the of image, yeah. And the clarity of image and the sea on the rock. Shadows, yeah. yeah. The big important sea on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> the big important sea on the rock. So... Now we come to a very interesting <laughs> part of, of the moon landing conspiracies, and I am going to pass this over to Jack. Okay, so I don't know how to introduce this. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the more interesting conspiracy theories I've heard, of course, the conspiracy theory is that we never went to the moon and it was all filmed in a studio. <laughs> it's all fake. It's all a hoax. Well, if we haven't been to the moon, that's the only other explanation, isn't it? Yes, of course. So what if I told you that there is a conspiracy theory suggesting that Stanley Kubrick himself was brought in by the US government to direct the fake moon landing footage. Mm -hmm. I have heard about this one. <laughs> so, my favourite film director of all time is Stanley Kubrick, so mm -hmm. this is why this... He's a great film director. Full Metal Jacket. And, yeah, some brilliant films. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> uh, Clockwork Orange. Yes, yes. Yeah. So when this subject came up, I was really... Eyes Wide Shut. Yes, Eyes although that gets a bit... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nicole Kidman without much... Yes, on. for the majority Anyway, of the back film. to the moon landings... <laughs> Um, well, there was a moon in it. <laughs> um, I also love analysis of film and analysing mm -hmm. film myself. Mm -hmm. So this theory does kind of link into the moon landing in quite an interesting way. Um, on top of the uh, suggestion that he directed the moon landing, he allegedly confessed his involvement in the hoax through the film The Shining, mm -hmm. which Again, is also one of my favourite films all of all time. We've this, I think, haven't we? Yeah, well, we watched it, didn't yeah, we? Did, we watched it as part of our research, just to uh, refresh our... Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a caveat, there are some very interest, uh, interesting, strange, unexplainable things uh, that happen in The Shining, um, which have people confused, such okay. as furniture disappearing between shots, the layout of the Overlook Hotel being inconsistent, characters entering a particular room and leaving different rooms in the same scenes, and even an entire carpet rotating between shots. <laughs> wow. Uh, so so yeah, we, we looked for that. And we did, we did. We, we honestly did. did. We did and didn't we, see it. We didn't yeah. notice. There is a very good... I'll get onto it in a, a little bit. But, okay. uh, well, so, we, we want to know where this rotating car goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the film itself is bizarre anyway, so this theory kind of uh, adds into that. Uh, Kubrick was also known to be a perfectionist, so it's unlikely that these mistakes, as he was known to retake shots over and over again until they were uh, exactly how he wanted them, it's, it's kind of yeah, bizarre that these mistakes didn't would he, creep through. In one shot, did, wasn't it like taken 400 times or something? Yes. Shelley Duvall was... Kind of screaming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, at the door. Yeah. Where the axe is coming through. Yeah, door. I think that whole sequence he took kind of 400, 500 shots, and yeah, it, it, we'll Blind. go into that in a different. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a lot of shots. People like to expand it a bit. That's oh, yeah, it's exaggeration. It's right. <laughs> a poor, poor woman. She would be screaming by the end of that. Uh, so yeah, the one theory that sticks out the most to me, mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I'm bringing it up, is uh, the moon landing confession. Right. So the fact that he used the shining as a confession to the moon landing. Uh, so I'm going to try my best to explain this theory. Okay, go for it. <laughs> the theory begins with another brilliant Stanley Kubrick film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. That was released in 1968, mm -hmm. just one year before America had landed their first manned mission on the moon in 1969 with Neil Armstrong, Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Okay, and the third one. Who was name was Michael something. Yeah, we're going to feel really bad. <laughs> no, I should know this. Michael Collins? Yes, it was Mr. Collins. He, he really does, never gets it. He should, have, he should <laughs> literally have. He always misses out, bless him. He did the hardest bit as well to yeah. kind of keep it. Yes. He was making sure they got back. <laughs> why, do I, why do I kind of feel like they should all have like jumped out at the same time? <laughs> uh, yes, so since Stanley Kubrick had already shot 2001 A Space Odyssey, hmm. it was believed that he was hired by the American government to shoot the fake landing. In quotations, the fake okay. landing. Right. Um, if you watch that film, the visual effects are in unbelievable Phenomenal. For, for the time. And this has led some people to suggest that he used similar visual techniques and effects to create a convincing looking moon landing. You can kind of see in the film that it's very ahead of its time. Mm. So the theory is that potentially he used the same mm -hmm. technology to fake the moon landing. Although that would have been, it was 1980 The Shining was released, wasn't it? Yes. So we're talking good old 10 years. I yeah. mean, it was released in 80, so... I know he was probably filming it in 79, wasn't he? So uh, 10 years. Over 10 years, yeah. 10 years. So technology would have improved anyway. Yes. 10 years of filmmaking. Yeah. Um, so this is where The Shining comes into the theory. 
Uh, conspiracy theorists believe that there are multiple clues in the film that point to the fact that Kubrick shot the moon landing, and this was his way of confessing it. So just a disclaimer, I don't personally believe this theory. <laughs> well, I'm not sure any of us really I'm, do. I'm going to but... jump in there. It's, they, they believe it's his confession, but yes. it must be pointed out that he, while he was alive, never... No, I, I, th- I think and, there's also a... And there, uh, uh, am I right, Jack, in, belie- in, uh, in thinking that most of this came out after his death? Because I know yeah. that his family have been adamant that they wished people wouldn't keep bringing this <laughs> oh, up. No, because, sorry. <laughs> because their family said he never had anything to do with it. He didn't film the, the, the fake moon landings and they wish that people would stop going on about this. Okay, I apologise to the Kubrick residents. <laughs> but... Then you'll have people saying, oh, that's because the government is probably threatening them if they say they do. <laughs> so well, anyway, anyway, I'm, anyway. I'm, I'm just bringing it up because yeah, 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 it's yeah. An interesting. So, so anyway, so yeah, we're, we're coming from the, from the focal point of the conspiracy theorists who, yes. who say there's things in this film yes. that are so blatantly obvious well. that, he's, <laughs> that he's saying, you know, yeah. I'm giving you the clues here, guys. Okay, so I'm going to try and my best to explain these. Go for <laughs> okay, it. go for it. Um, the Overlook Hotel. The Overlook Hotel. At the beginning of the film, it's mentioned that the Overlook Hotel was built on an ancient Indian burial ground. The manager of the hotel, who shows Jack Torrance around, has an American flag on his desk, and in front of the window in his office is an eagle. This is thought to be a nod to the lunar landing module named Eagle. <laughs> That's a bit of a stretch, though. <laughs> okay. Are we, are we going to go through all this and then pick up on these points and discuss well, you these can, points? You can, I'm just presenting well, it. Wasn't there another part of this? Yeah, see, I spotted something yesterday. Tell me if you've got this down. Possibly. But the eagle... I dare say you're going to talk about the window, aren't you, as well? Not in this theory, but okay. I think I know what you okay, mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll talk about the, maybe the window in a bit. So you've got the eagle and definitely the flag sitting on the desk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. However, people at that time and lots of people, even now, people, you know, have, have an American flag in their office yeah. room or whatever. What I noticed, whether it's got anything to do with this, <laughs> the name of the manager is prominent in all the time in that in shot. In the shot, yeah. Okay. It doesn't go out the shot. It's there right at the bottom of the screen. I can't think what the manager's name was. It's Stuart. Stuart. Stuart, Stuart um, Astronaut. <laughs> yeah. But if you read it with it from the front, the words Starman. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. I didn't know that. Now, <laughs> really? They could have chosen any name. Yeah. They could and have chosen any interesting name. Interesting that that... But in that name, you don't have to juggle the letters about or anything. Yeah. You can see Starman. There's, there's a couple of extra letters in there, in there. but it does Star say Man. Starman. Now, oh, how, there we how, go. What's the coincidence that the manager would have Starman in his name? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, we noticed that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we did. Congratulations. I'm proud of that. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Maybe we're the only people that notice. <laughs> oh, yes. Starman. Sorry, Kubrick residents. We're adding to the, we're adding <laughs> to the theory. <laughs> adding to the theory. Uh, so the second one was the carpet patterns. Right. In yeah. a shot taken from above, we see Danny Torrance, son of Jack Torrance, mm-hmm. playing in the corridor on a patterned carpet. Conspiracy theorists believe that it looks strikingly similar to the Apollo 11 launch pad. He even has toy ah, cars yeah, that, and vehicles placed yeah, that sequence, mm-hmm. yeah. around the carpet in a similar way to where vehicles would be on the launch site. Right. Yeah. In the same scene, Danny eventually rises up from the carpet and he is wearing a sweater slash jumper. In your country. Is, a very poorly knitted one. <laughs> yes. And on it is a rocket with the text Apollo 11. And it's actually got the very, rocket. Very blatant, yeah. So yeah. what we're saying is when he stands up, he it's, is literally yeah. taking off from yeah. the launch site. Yes. Right. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is seen as a big clue that Kubrick is indeed talking about his involvement with the fake moon landing project. As Danny rises up from the carpet, seen as the launch pad, mm-hmm. wearing his jumper, Apollo 11, he enters the dreaded room 237. Now, in the book, the room number was 217, but it is widely believed that Kubrick changed it to 237 as the distance between the Earth and the Moon is roughly 237,000 miles. miles. I actually Googled this just to make sure, Mm -hmm. and it actually said 238,000 miles, but I assume this is some kind of estimation. Well, since then, they've obviously checked with the mirrors on the Moon. Yes. (laughs) Made it exact. (laughs) Well, Well, I thought that was interesting. Let's put it this way. It's very close to, to, Mm. to the figure. I thought that was kind of a bit of a contradiction, though, because if we can tell how far away the moon is, then surely we would have been able to... So what was the, what, what was the, na- the number of the room? Uh, room 237. But that wasn't the number of the room in the book. In the book, it was 217. Yeah, so there was no real reason for him to... I mean, he, I've got to say uh, that, that he changed a lot of aspects from the book. Yeah. I mm. don't think Stephen King was that happy with him. Not, not at all. No. Uh, so he changed a lot of aspects. He didn't. Uh, a room number is a room number, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, you didn't need to change it. I had to yeah. change it to a number that is either... Is very, 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 very close. 
It's for a reason. To the distance from it's for a reason, yeah. the moon. I also saw something in a documentary I watched, which I'll bring up in a minute. Um, on the actual tag on the key to the door. Oh, yeah, I saw that tag. It says yeah. room number, but NO237. So room NO237, which apparently is an anagram for moon room. But that it does feel like a bit of a stretch. That, I does feel like a stretch. That, that was that's not in my notes, but I know that's, that was something that's, that's that, <laughs> that feeds in. <laughs> you wait for the other ones. Okay. Ooh. Um, other small clues that I found doing my research. Uh, we know the famous moment when Jack Torrance is writing, "All work and no play, play makes, makes Jack, Jack a dull boy." boy. This is a, this is very silly. Apparently, all, as in A double L, is actually A one one. Okay, Meaning Apollo. Yeah, no, that, I think that's, <laughs> that's a, that is one, one, of, one of the biggest reaches. Yes. Yeah, that's a super stretch. Why do I imagine somebody going through like, <laughs> yeah. that frame by frame Trying to check to see if yeah. one of them looks like a one? What <laughs> things they can kind of almost do. Yeah. Carry on. Uh, when Danny comes out of room 237, mm-hmm. he has been beaten and his Apollo 11 jumper is torn and ripped. Uh, he is also silent and doesn't speak when asked what's happening. This is to represent the secret that Kubrick was forced to keep after his involvement in the hoax. This is also added to when Jack Torrance begins to go crazy and rants about his responsibilities for the hotel secrets. So this was basically Kubrick using his characters to vent his frustration. I think from that frustration. Point, we, don't, we only hear Tony speaking, don't we? His, For a bit, his, yeah. his imaginary friend. You do your time. Hi, I'm, I'm Tony. Tony. <laughs> I was... Danny's not here, here right, right now. now. <laughs> Danny's gone away. Hi, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Buzz. <laughs> I'm, I'm wiggling my finger right now. <laughs> I don't remember you have to wiggle your finger. Line. That might be in possibly an extended one, which I've not seen. Oh, really? Really? Also, I don't remember that was that half an hour extended. Really? Yeah, because yeah, we yeah, watched the extended he, version, He's talking to we? his mother, who... Uh, what's, what's the surname of the... Torrance. Torrance, so he's like... Yeah. Hello, Mrs. Torrance. <laughs> yeah, Daddy's he's wiggling his fingers. Here anymore. I've never seen that scene. You know, no. we finally found oh, something. something that Jack hasn't <laughs> yeah. seen. Because I was oh, going, no, we ruined it. <laughs> for we were then. going through the scenes. Like, yeah, I mean, I was... obviously, I've seen The Shining, but I probably saw The Shining back in the early eighties. So. I know there's a, there's a UK cut and an American cut. I've only ever seen the UK cut, which is considerably shorter. Yeah, and I know you've seen the American cut. Yeah, which is like half an hour longer. Yes, and we were yeah. trying to figure out which bits I haven't seen, and that's obviously <laughs> one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Danny's gone to the, the moon. That was the bit that she probably tipped us off. That. <laughs> 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 um, Don't spoil it. <laughs> there are some uh, bizarre details in the film that could okay, okay. be considered clues or okay. confessions. However, if you found this theory interesting, I recommend a documentary called Room 237, mm-hmm. which goes into a lot more weird theories about this okay. film. Some of them are just very bizarre and some yep. of them are interesting. Uh, as this was the moon landing episode, I thought it was an interesting theory to bring up. Uh, my personal theory, uh, feeling about this theory, is that it's all nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it at all. Okay. Um, I still believe there are some weird kind of hidden meanings in The Shining, uh, but not at this okay. theory in particular. Is, it, is there anything else you want to add on that one? Um, oh, you, Jim. Jack, yeah. uh, Zach was no. about to jump in. Well, yeah. you've added some ideas. Because there you? was something that, was it you spotted, yeah. that... On the murals ah, yeah, in okay, one of so the rooms. Hotel is built supposedly on a Indian burial site. Yes. Which I've got to say is a bit of a trope. Yes. Okay. <laughs> a lot of horror movies. The year before, 1979, the Amateurville Horror came out, mm. which was the first movie that had the house built on a. Yeah. And later you had the poltergeist. And uh, it's kind of. I think that when it comes to The Shining, okay, I'm not knocking your favourite director <laughs> here, but. With Amateurville Horror, you had, it starts off with a family being murdered mm. and then the father turning the shotgun on himself mm. in a building. Just took a dark turn. This <laughs> in, a, in a building that's built on an Indian burial ground. Yeah. ground. And Poltergeist is another one. And then you've got yeah. the, sh- and then, and the shiny, you've got a hotel, yeah. <laughs> which is built on an Indian Well, that's kind of ground. Stephen King's fault. Yeah. <laughs> Not Stephen King. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he, uh, Stephen King obviously didn't write the Amateurville Horror. Mm. Uh, but that, that kind of Indian burial ground with uh, Pet cemetery and other things yeah. has become like a horror movie trope. And, um, and then uh, with The Shining, he's there in the manager's office and the manager tells him that, that one of the previous caretakers had yeah. got cabin fever Kills all his family and then shot himself with a shotgun. Mm. And you're thinking, hang on a minute, there's, there's kind of a very, very similar thing going on between this and a movie that came out the previous yeah. year. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then, this is what got it for me, is in the Amityville horror, it suddenly flashes up a slate saying, 
one month later. Mm. And what does he do in The Shining? Yeah. One month later. <laughs> she used it. <laughs> she used... Hang on. Hang Stanley on. Kubrick has basically redone. I do know that the, the, as, a, as a slight counter argument, I have heard that there were there was some studio interference and he they kind of tried to make him turn it into more of a conventional horror film. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if the studio kind anyway, of had anyway, interference. Back, back, back to the yes. movies. I'm just saying that for me, I remember the Amityville horror and it's kind of like, you know, hang on a minute, we're watching almost the same movie here. Yeah. Um, it was on an, uh, on an uh, American Indian burial ground. And if you remember, the manager is showing him around, and there are lots of different uh, murals, murals depicting things, yeah. uh, Native American artwork. And there's a scene there, see if you can remember this, Jack, where Jack, the caretaker, is throwing a baseball against a wall. Yeah. Boom, boom, and then he ends up throwing it down the corridor. If you look at that scene, he's throwing it against the wall, which has got a massive mural on it that shows what looks like four Saturn V rockets. Oh, okay. Yeah, Some no, people, either. <laughs> big Saturn V rockets on the wall. Some people have also suggested that not only do they resemble the Saturn V rockets, but they could also resemble arrows. Yeah. And Apollo, the god Apollo, obviously had a bow arrow. A couple of ones. So, but uh, they definitely, yeah. they defi- I've got to say, they definitely do look like large Saturn yeah. V rockets. There was a couple that I didn't write down, but I know of one of them I just remembered. So have oh, you yeah? heard that one before? No, oh, I've not heard that one. It's for you to check <laughs> that's out. That's two, that's two. Um, one of them was, have you heard of the Gemini missions? Yes. Mm-hmm. There was something to do with the fact that in the book there's only one ghost child. Yes. Forever uh, I, 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 Yeah, one ghost child, but there were two, two children that got killed, but they weren't, as you yeah. were going to say, twins. But he changed them into twins, and apparently yeah. that's something to do with the, the Gemini, Gemini project, which yeah. was, in fact, the first uh, low-orbit uh, mission of astronauts from the America. Yeah. One of my favourite pieces of evidence that I've just remembered. <laughs> evidence, I say. Okay. Um, in the famous scene where Jack Torrance is stuck in the food cellar, mm. and yep. he's kind of going a bit crazy, yep. there's a shelf behind him mm-hmm. full of a drink called Tang. Okay. Okay. Now, this is an advert from 1970. <laughs> we, did, we did see a lot of product placement in that yeah. scene, especially is... Heinz tomato ketchup. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that scene, there's some Tang. Okay. And this is... An advert. Oh, we got a picture. Okay, listeners, you're not going to see this. This is an advert. This is an advert for Tang, Spaceman, okay. from 1970. This is a typical meal served to astronauts aboard Apollo space flights. Oatmeal, sausage, toast, applesauce, and in a special zero-gravity pouch, Tang, the energy breakfast drink. Orange-flavored Tang with rich natural flavor. And more vitamin C than orange juice. Energy Tang for spacemen and Earth families. Right. There we are. <laughs> oh, no, we didn't see that. It's it's quite, it kind of looks like Tango. Tango. It does a little bit, yeah. yeah maybe, maybe Tang turned into Tango. <laughs> yeah, it might have done. You know, just like uh, Marathon became Snickers and yeah. things like that. Name changes. They added Who knows? <laughs> I didn't know drinking a Tango, I was being drinking Spaceman juice. <laughs> maybe they added an O because Apollo has an O, o on, on the it. end. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tang. Apollo. <laughs> um, yes, so if anyone wants to say anything else about that. Okay, well, we're discussing the theories behind uh, the the uh, Kubrick movie, The Shining. Um, yeah, the impossible window. Oh, yeah. In the office, the, mm. the manager's office, when he arrives and he goes through his interview, there is clearly a window behind the yes. manager's desk where you can see trees. Pointing very clearly outside. Outside, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But... When you look at the position where it's depicted in the hotel, mm. there must have been there just should a, be a corridor, corridor yeah. or, well, certainly not a window to the outside. Mm. So people have been calling that the impossible room or the impossible window, Yeah, meaning that it's the impossibility. Mm. You see, it's impossible. Um, they couldn't have gone to the moon. It's impossible. Huh? Well, that was another. There are similar things to that. If you uh, want... I know you've got Starman, remember, so he's <laughs> yeah. sitting at the desk with his flag and his, his eagle, eagle yeah, exactly. in the, <laughs> with the impossible window. Um, if you watch Room 237, as I say, there are mm-hmm. a few kind of things that add to that. Mm-hmm. There's one of, um, it's obviously a famous scene, if you have, even if you haven't seen The Shining, you know the shot of Danny Torrance on his tricycle yep. going around the, round the round hallways. Round, yeah. yeah, it's very iconic. There's a part of the film where he's... Was saying that we wanted a couple of those Oh, bikes. yes, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually seen that carpet as well in B&M. Have oh, you? Oh, really? really wow! <laughs> you got shiny oh, carpet. That'd be awesome. Um, but anyway, he's, the, the famous shot is the camera tracking behind him, yep. yeah. following him down the cor- corridors. Someone maps out the actual route he takes, mm-hmm. and he actually goes up a floor right, without yeah, actually ever going, going up any floor. stairs. Weird. Well, it's you said this a few times in your description about mm. this, things in the hotel. Uh, Kubrick being 
you know, meticulous, meticulous yeah. with his filming and making shots. Of, but I understood from watching it that things changed, like the impossible window or impossible mm. room and the layout of the hotel and the carpet changing and furniture moving. And there is uh, a, a depiction of the maze mm. on a table where Jack is looking down at the maze. Yeah. yeah. And also where the maze is outside, there is a picture of the maze on a board mm. and they don't match up at all. The maze yeah. is different. The maze is a weird one. Yeah. It also changes size a lot. Well, the maze in the book, it yeah. was topiary animals. Okay. Okay. In the book, there were meant to be topiary. There was no maze. Mm. Okay. And then when I think it's in the final, I haven't read the book for for, for years, but I think in the final sequences where um, Dan is trying to escape with his mum, the topiary animals come alive and try to attack them. Yeah. And Kubrick said, "Well, we, you know, this, this is we're not going to do." I'm being this. attacked by yeah. leaves. <laughs> this is like asking me to film the moon landing. Yeah. <laughs> um, <Ridiculous. laughs> so he switched it to the maze. But the point is, the the maze doesn't match the picture of the maze outside. Yeah, yeah, there are all these differences, and as you say, there's differences within the hotel and the layout, and everything keeps changing. I put that down to the fact that that's part of the malevolent spirit that that things the whole hotel yeah. itself yeah. changes it. it it, it itself is a maze. Yeah, itself is a maze, and it's changing. I know? think on a, a, a subtext as well, I think Kubrick wants to make you feel a bit uneasy without yeah, really yeah, noticing yeah. it. Very much. Yeah, I mean, the music really did. Music's great, yeah. And, and I kind of couldn't help but I thought when I was watching the maze and they're charging through the maze in the, in the snow and taking into consideration almost like things, the impossible room, um, which kind of made me think of the room of requirements in the in Harry Potter that it's a room that doesn't exist yeah. <laughs> and that room obviously can't have a window to the outside things in the hotel changing and as mm. you know, although we didn't see the the carpet flipping round Hogwarts yeah. things it, move it, all it the wasn't, time it wasn't everything. obvious it's almost like the hotel was Hogwarts yeah. Yeah. and the maze res resembled uh, I think it's the um, Goblet of Fire they had a maze in it you know oh, the tri yeah, charging yeah, yeah. around that's twice that's come up today <laughs> yeah. and it's kind of like I, th I think J.K. Rowling might have got some ideas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, she but, did take a few ideas. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so back to our moon landings. This is, this is going to be Kubrick's confession. Yes. A confession that he never yeah. actually physically said anything about. I believe there is also a mockumentary called Dark Side of the Moon. Somebody pretending to be him. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of like a, it was kind of pointing fun at the theory. Yeah, I think which, there was somebody who was meant to be, look, be kind of like a Kubrick lookalike. Yeah. <laughs> and his family, I think, again, his family got really annoyed about that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, where do we all stand on this? Well, how do we explain it? Uh, I've got to say that it's so blatantly obvious mm. that Stanley Kubrick put things in there yeah. pointing towards the Apollo missions and possibly the Gemini ones as well. That could mm. have just been a coincidence. So how could this be? Why was it? Now, for me, mm. I know that, that, that man has landed on the moon because the two biggest pieces of proof for me is the lunar orbiter that has hence scanned the whole surface of the moon in high resolution yeah. and has photographed all the landing sites mm -hmm. and you can see where those landing sites are. In fact, even today, funnily enough, a friend of mine on uh, social media put up a picture that he bought himself a new big refractor telescope because he's yeah. an avid <laughs> astronomer. And some of the posts after that were, were other astronomers saying, oh, if you look at these coordinates, because of these the, the, the telescopes these days, you can basically, they're all computerized, so you can punch in the coordinates. And you say, I want to look at uh, the Horses Head Nebula. And, it, the, and the, rather than like in the oh, old wow. days where you'd search for it, the, the, just literally using GPS and everything, it goes, <laughs> turns itself. And they're, exactly, you literally ask it to show you things. And they'll give him all the different coordinates for the different landing sites. Oh, yeah. well, you've got to try and see if you can see this one and that one and the rest of it. Uh, so the landing sites are there. Yeah. You know, they are there. Mm. And when mankind uh, goes back to the moon, they will be inevitably proved to be there. Yeah. And the other piece of proof is, as we said right at the beginning, that's why I said about right at the beginning, you're jumping on the yeah. uh, <laughs> thing about Russia. Other space agencies tracked them. Yes. And those governments who don't like America <laughs> would be the first people to yeah. say, no, you're lying, you <laughs> naughty, naughty Americans. You've never been to the moon, have you? See, that, that, they, that's exactly what they would they do. They would leave it to the people to try and figure it out. Yeah, yeah they wouldn't leave it to the people. They, they would say, no, it never happened. Yeah. We can prove it. There, there are no moon landings. So, or we didn't track you. So <laughs> from the perspective of the, of the proof yes. and the things that we've discussed, 
I am, I personally can't speak for everybody else on the planet, but I am adamant that the moon landings occurred. They are a real thing. Now, if Stanley, Co if that's the case, Stanley Kubrick as a director knows that he didn't film the moon landings mm. because the moon landings actually happened. Yeah. So then we have to ask ourselves, well, if that's the case, why has he put these things so blatantly in his movie? Yeah. There are a lot there, of different there are a lot, interpretations of the film. There are, yeah, there are a lot of... I mean, you could say that maybe he was himself a very avid um, yeah, he, he, backer of, of, yeah. of, of the whole idea of America going to, to, the, to the moon and decided to put it in as a homage to going mm. to the moon. But countless movies, directors put Easter eggs in them, don't they? Yes. Yeah, you know, E.T., all that there's Yoda walking down the street in the in the Halloween bit. And yeah. Oh, look, we're at Raiders of the Lost Ark and there's R2-D2 and C-3PO on a... On a, bit on of, a his plane's mm. called Which obviously makes yeah. no sense yeah. within the context of the film. Make no sense, but filmmakers do that. They like yeah. to drop things in. For me, it is so blatantly obvious that he has put these things in there for a reason... No, yeah. known best to him but because the moon landings did happen hmm. he therefore would have known he didn't film them okay yeah. so he's not do making a confession so we've got to just surmise why he did that and the best thing i can come up with myself with how i feel about it is that uh, if between 19 because he brought out um 2001 a space odyssey odyssey in 68 yeah the moon landings happened in, which was a phenomenal movie of its time. Hmm. It still holds up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, one year later, you get the moon landings. Going back to you saying some people, oh, that, that, that can't be, you know, that's unbelievable. Hmm. And then that 10 year stretch through the 70s, it makes me wonder if somewhere along the line, people were already saying, whispers were coming through to Stanley Kubrick saying, you know, you know, people reckon that because oh. you did 2001 A Space Oddity, <laughs> yeah. that, Odyssey, 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 that you filmed the moon landings, you yeah. know, and that kind of rumour. Yeah. You, want, it, you so, want me to film the moon landings? <laughs> yeah. Here you so, go. So the, I as a director it. goes, right, okay, I'm doing this. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do the moon landings. <laughs> what, what's the most creative way <laughs> yeah, I can do, do it? Sneak in <laughs> the moon landings that everybody keeps telling me that I, I supposedly <laughs> filmed. I can just see him being like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a confession that everyone's going to, believe I, I i faked the moon landings and people are going to talk about it on a podcast in 40 years time, <laughs> 40 years time. <laughs> you're like, what, what's a podcast yeah, you're, well, I, 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 don't, I don't think you necessarily felt that uh, thought that deeply about it. you probably just thought i mean you, you both yeah, are, are, yeah. are film directors yourselves and uh, if somebody if you heard that somebody felt that you'd done something as mm. a secret you know yeah, you might yourself say do you know what? i'm gonna just sneak a little, <laughs> yeah. a little you know homage what? in here just to tease people. Well, something on a shelf in the background yeah. something here something there just to just because yeah because yeah. yeah, some things are like, unexplained yeah and they are left unexplained yeah. i mean he certainly put that in there no that was not comp totally there's no chance. no question yeah. no, no question. question no questions you know i couldn't help myself director's name star man yeah. you know, it was there right in front of you he's put these things in there but it certainly isn't. Because, for people to talk about. Yeah, yeah but he, he's done it for his own reasons and not as a commission for, for the moon landings. Yes. So and, that's how I feel. Anyway. Yes, and yeah. to add to that as well, there are countless different um, theories as to what the film means and everything. Yeah, this, isn't, so this isn't the only so one. There's other things about how it's to do with America, uh, how corrupt America is and everything. There's yeah. a lot of different interpretations. I, I find it's very dodgy ground sometimes to, to walk on the analysing... Film, yeah, yeah. Films because it is possible to overanalyze yeah. something. I mean, I, 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 I love I love film analyzing. I don't. Yeah, I, 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 know, know, but I can go. I far mean, I, I, I re there was a particular author. Um, I can't for the life of me, which one it was, because this is back when I was uh, I was at school, and uh, you know when you used to do those book studies at school, mm. and mm. you had a horrible question that came up saying, "What do you think the author was thinking about?" Oh when yeah, he yeah, wrote yeah. This? Mm. yeah. And uh, they put one of these authors to take his own exam yeah. questions and when it got to that it's like yeah, I was actually thinking about I could really do with another cup of tea <laughs> yeah. but if you put that on an exam paper you, can you get zilch. zilch because they want a really deep and meaningful and thoughtful and as an author he just said well no it's not deep and meaningful I wrote the story it's coming out of my head it's flowing that's how it is there's nothing deep and mysterious and wonderful I just wrote a story it. I just wrote a story mm. and I think that over analysing things can be a big yeah. it danger. is possible you know people can I, go too I, far as a slight counter I do think 
film is an art form and there are lots of expression that goes oh, yeah, into definitely. Into film. Could... Nothing's, nothing's just to tell the story. There are things oh, God, going on. I mean, in books as well. You just look yeah. at Animal Farm and things like that. You know, they, yeah. they have meanings behind them. You, mm. can, you can read Animal Farm and take it as... A story. A story, <laughs> yeah. a story. You can watch Animal Farm, uh, the anime. You can see it for its surface value. value mm. but, without, but then you can look deeper. But then mm. without understanding exactly what it's trying to tell you about yeah. Russia. You know? and, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I fully take on board that. But mm. sometimes you can go, yeah, I suppose it's that fine line. You've got it's to... a fine line. I, I, recommend, I recommend you try Room 237 because there are some very silly theories, as you say, that go way too deep and... Make too many connections, okay. weak connections. Yeah, we'll, we'll look it up. <laughs> and you need to go and check out the giant Saturn, Saturn the ex- Five rockets. <laughs> yeah. And you need to check out. Watch the, the extended version of the Shining. I do. Jack, I do. The yeah. Starman. Yes. <laughs> it was right in front of you, Jack. It's right in front of you. Honestly, how did you miss that? That's, That's proof. That, that, proof. That, even when I was even when I was researching, that didn't come didn't up come in up. any articles. That was the first thing I said, wasn't it? We're watching yeah. it because we were uh, okay. We were watching it not only for. Uh, uh, because well, I hadn't seen the extended version, and as I haven't seen the, it for years, uh, was it the first time you'd seen the Shining? Yeah, all it was the, way the first time I'd seen it. And but we were specifically also watching it yeah. instead of just watching a movie through the lens of a. We were yeah. looking for these little, little things, yeah, in preparation things. for this podcast, and, and, and that jumped out me. That yes. just straight jumped away. out me straight yeah. away. Starman. There we go. I've been mean, coincidence. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. As a as a kind of end to that oh, little yes, bit yes, yes. Ooh, um, I feel that this theory is a step too far or should I say one giant leap too far you've been waiting you've been waiting to <laughs> pop that one in there. There. Yes. <laughs> do you know what time it is oh I don't know what time is it time I don't know <laughs> What's it's time mean? for everyone's favourite segment oh, oh yes, yes. <laughs> let's get quizzical let's, let's get quizzical quizzical, quizzical. I want to get quizzical let's get your quizzical. mind oh, talk no, no, let me hear let's, your, let's, your, your oh, moon talk yeah, let's moon talk, moon talk. <laughs> <laughs> or let's me see your moon walk <laughs> oh yeah we need to work on that it's a bit, a bit, yeah, bit small in here <laughs> next episode we'll work on that one okay Okay. when we're on Mars yes can you moon walk on Mars that's a good question or is it Mars Mars? Because Mars Walk, yeah. Or should it be an Earth Walk when you're on Earth? I don't know. We'll do a, we'll, we'll definitely do a Mars episode. Yeah, that sounds I love like the idea. Fun. Anyway, anyway, it's quizzical time. <laughs> Let's get quizzical. Okay, three questions. <gasps> These are to do with the moon. The moon. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. They're probably quite easy, but I'm I don't know. Fail completely on this. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> is it made of cheese? <laughs> okay. Question one. What do many astronomers believe caused the formation of the moon? A. A meteor. B, the sun, or C, a volcanic eruption? I would say A, a meteor. meteor. Correct. Yes. I would say a meteor colliding with the Earth and then the yeah. debris getting caught into the Earth's uh, gravitational pull. Yeah. And when you're in space and in a void, flat earthers, um, <laughs> <laughs> when you've got a mass, you have mass weight, more mass Crushing you get, it. more mass you get, the more gravity crushes in on itself. Yes. And then you have this ball of... Um, rock. Notice, then, notice it's a ball. Yep, it is a ball. <laughs> it's a sphere. Okay, it's not a flat disc. <laughs> it's a sphere which then is locked. It's it's got gravity of its own. Although I think it's just it's only moving like a centimeter or something away from the Earth. Every, every yeah, progressively yeah. Yeah, yeah t- the tiniest amount, but suppose. And uh, and that is then counteracting against Earth's gravity. So that's where we go. And of course, flat Earthers. That's why we have tidal <laughs> times where the moon pulls. The yes. gravitational pull makes the sea go out. It's, it's kind of like an egg shape, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. With, with the tides. That's why the, that's why we have tides, because the Earth moves... We never a, covered tides on flat Earth. The Earth moves under the water, basically, doesn't it? And the, yeah. the moon pulls. pulls the water away from the surface. Exactly. So the t- tide goes out, and then as the Earth, uh, the, the Earth rotates away from the moon, yes. that becomes the gravitational pull becomes weaker, and the tides come in. So, like that, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got that one. So, We're in question one. <laughs> most astronomers believe that a large asteroid struck the Earth and the molten rock thrown into space from the impact formed the moon. Yeah. So that's basically what you said. <laughs> more, in more detail. <laughs> well, okay. Going back to what I was saying about a drop of water, obviously with surface tension, but if you, if you have something in, in a void, it will. If, you, if you're up in the space and you see somebody in the space station and they have a drop of water, there's no gravity, mm. but it's still through water tension creates a sphere. So you're talking molten rock, mm. fluid. On a larger scale. On a larger scale. Yeah. And it's going to make that yeah. spherical shape, which then gets peppered by bits of... Well, yeah, it's, got loads of it's got loads of impacts. Oh, yeah, because uh, you've got pieces of debris zooming around all over the place, impacting. Mm. Wouldn't that be like a really huge meteorite, though? 
what that hit the earth yeah but this is this is it's got to be while the earth is forming Okay. So yeah, we, the Earth itself at that so time we're would billions, have just been billions, 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 billions. Would, would have, Well, probably in, in, in well, while well, we've got our stellar nursery of planets, uh, with the debris around the sun, literally starting to slowly come together, clash, collide, compress down, and yeah. create the the planets in, that were the unknown planets in our solar system. So it would have been very, very early on. In there, so. Crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah, but that's one of the things. If you can go up into the moon, I know they've brought moon rock back, and again, we've seen a small piece, bit. We've yeah, seen, we have seen a piece of the moon. Um, but that's the thing. That was at the Le- Leicester Space that's Centre. That's when you get the co- correlation between rock on the moon and rock on the Earth, and you can see the similarities, yeah. the mineral contents, and all the rest. Very sparkly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, anyway. You don't want it on your boots. No. <laughs> Question two. What is the moon's atmosphere made of? Oh, good. I didn't think Ooh. the moon actually had an atmosphere. <laughs> Go with your instinct. <laughs> it hasn't got one. Correct. I was going to say, you're throwing me out there, Jack. It's a trick question. You're making me me feel like, what? Have I ever gone wrong here? Have I ever missed something, a key bit of information? Was was moon atmosphere 101? It's it's going to make me sound really stupid if I don't know. (laughs) There is no atmosphere. So the moon is too small to have enough gravity to hold on to an atmosphere. Yeah, unless you're having a party. You want want some atmosphere at your party, then. (laughs) (laughs) Party on the moon. Party on the moon. I bet you if they do that, they'll put a moon base there and they'll do things on it, you know. You want some atmosphere? Come to the moon party base. Moon club. That sounds like like an advert. That's it. (laughs) The only place on the moon that's got a real atmosphere. (laughs) Okay, question three. Final question. Oh, only three. There is it. There's only ever been three. There's only ever been three. three. Oh, right. Okay. We can add more, but... No, no, three's good. Three's good. We're on a roll. Which planet in our solar system has the largest moon? Ooh. 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 I, I know what I kind of want, I kind of want to say, but I, it's probably going to be wrong. I don't know. I'm going, I, I, mm. It's not a fact that's jumping into my mind. Uh, I would probably go for the biggest planet, which would be Jupiter. That's what I was thinking. But it might be something unexpected like Neptune. Um, mm. No, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Well, if, I, if we go for different ones, okay. then, then we cover more Don't ground. Forget, you, you, the two gas giants are Jupiter and Saturn. Yeah. And it just strikes me that uh, it should be. I think Jupiter. I'm, we're thinking Jupiter. Yeah. Correct. Yeah! yeah. Thank it's goodness. It's not Phobos, is it? Uh, no, what I have here is Ganymede. 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 Right. Oh. Ganymede. Uh, Ganymede is well, the Phobos. largest... Uh, which one's for Phobos? Which is the planet for Phobos? For some reason, Phobos was coming to my head. Carol. Name of a Doctor Who story, actually. Mm-hmm, yeah. So Ganymede is the largest moon in our solar system. Earth's moon is actually the fifth largest. So oh. we've got a pretty small moon. <laughs> or mid-table moon, anyway. Small moon. There you go. That's the moon. That is the end of Let's Get Quizzical. Yay, let's Yay. get quizzical. Quizzical. Bonus question. Is the moon a giant space egg? No. <laughs> and we don't talk about that Doctor Who episode. Yeah, Doctor Who episode, Kill the Moon, with Peter Capaldi. It's not the best. <laughs> Moon planet scene. <laughs> hey. So, what have we learned? Oh, we've learned oh my so god, much. we've learned so much. I've learned about The Shining, which I didn't expect. Yes, <laughs> we've learned stuff about The Shining. Uh, we've learned stuff about The Shining. We've learned stuff about... The moon uh, landings, the space moon travel. Landings and the conclusive proof that they're real, uh, that Kubrick's film isn't a confession. <laughs> yeah. Or is it? <laughs> ah, yeah. Or is it? Like, Open it up to the audience. Yeah, come on. Comment below. What do you think? What do you think? We're not trying to tell you or convince you of anything. No, not at okay. all. I don't personally believe that theory. I just thought it was an interesting one uh, to bring up and yeah. talk about. So. Just as a poll, okay, I, I'm obviously 100% moon landings yeah. are mm-hmm. real because they did happen. Don't have to believe in them. They're real. What about you guys? Make that two. Right, they so. happened. Yeah, they definitely happened. Okay, definitely so, happened. So everybody here... Uh, it's a subject the... that's still fascinating. Is, oh, is, is a moonite. <laughs> okay, for me, I want to see further exploration of the moon so people can actually see... Mm. Just conclusive, yeah. Conclusive proof of the moon landing. Unquestionable. And then it's, then it's nailed, solid. Mm. But I'm sure there's some way somebody will be saying, no, it's all CGI. We, was, <laughs> we were saying earlier about the uh, how it's going to be as common to go to the moon as it is to get on a plane like a commercial mm. air flight mm-hmm. we should just buy tickets for all the people who believe that the moon landings were fake just send them up first <laughs> show them the moon and then bring them back down <laughs> they <laughs> hypnotised us they, they hypnotized use us. drugs they put gas in the air <laughs> right. uh, but yeah no it's a fascinating subject moon landings and they happened yeah that's what we feel anyway just, just you might feel different please Put it, put it in the comments. The subject of space travel is just fascinating to me. Yeah, we've, got to, we've got to come back and, and take a visit to, to Mars. I mean, this episode's been <laughs> on for a while. Not, 
If you enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe to this channel and comment below any suggestions of topics or activities you'd like to listen to in future episodes. It's goodbye from Buzz. Goodbye from Jack. And goodbye from Zach. Bye. Now we know. Now we know. Now we know. Now we know. The moon landings so. happen. <laughs> now we know. Now we know show. Yeah. <laughs>